Want help to grow your business? Download Bryn, the world's first business advisor in your pocket. To find out more, visit Bryn.ai or search the App Store today. Hello and welcome to Teach Me Tech. I am your host, Laurel Gray, and I am guested here by Mr. Andrew Wadsworth from IT Moody. And as far as I'm concerned, Andrew is like a cloud technology god. He basically takes a look at all different cloud technology mm -hmm. uh, tools and integrates them. So he's an integration specialist. I guess that's fair enough to say. Yes, yes. Our company, we do a lot of integrations for people. Yep. Awesome. And on Teach Me Tech, what we do is we basically talk about all the different technology tools and how you can get a demonstration of setting up and using those tools directly into your business. So. Today, we're talking about how to get started with Zapier, or Zapier. I think we're going to call it Zapier today. Zap. It's a zap, isn't it? Yeah. We're, we're creating zap. zaps in Zapier. So we're going to go so with that. Zapier. OK. We'll go with that pronunciation. Mm -hmm. And before we get started, just two quick things for you. First thing, follow along with this guy and his outdated iMac computer. Um, basically, if you've got a device, a laptop, or a mobile device, make sure that you're following along with us. Grab your cup of coffee, grab your cat, grab whatever, and follow along. Second thing, ask and share. Get on social media, whether it's Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, or even Google+. Plus. Oh my gosh. And hit the hashtag TeachMeTech for uh, the best way to interact with us and also with the rest of the Business Blueprint team. All right, so we're ready to get started. And here's what we're going to cover today about Zapier. So what is Zapier and why you should consider using it for your business? a background on APIs, what the heck are they, and how they work, the different ways you can use Zapier to streamline your business, mm -hmm. how Zapier connects your business, how to get started and set up your account, choosing the most important zaps for your business, setting up your first zap, testing and maintaining your zaps. Boy, you were going to say a lot of that word today, zaps. And finally, additional features and integrations and when you would use them. So we always like to go through that last little bit. And without further ado, let's get started talking about Zapier. Are you ready? I'm ready. Let's you, do it. You were born ready. This is your domain, your field of expertise. This is, yeah. I love Zapier. Ooh. When it came out, it was just such a blessing to small business. Oh, it's fabulous. And mm -hmm. basically, on every episode of Teach Me Tech, we are talking about Zapier and how you can integrate it with the tools that we recommend. So this is like one of those cornerstone episodes where you're going to get really the information that you need to put it all together. So what is Zapier and why you should consider using it in your business? Yeah. So Zapier is a service that brings together different cloud-based services like your accounting software or your CRM and allows you to have them speak with each other. So mm -hmm. if you've got something happening in your CRM and you want to have it also creating something in your accounting software, Zapier is the connector that mm -hmm. allows you to have them speak with each other. Awesome. And using it in your business is, is there's lots of different ways you can use it in your business. And so it's just about looking at what process you're doing in your business that are tedious and repetitive because it's an automation tool. So that's, the, that's the, probably the most important thing to think about with Zapier is you're only really using it for tedious and repetitive tasks. Things that if you did it manually, it would be very basic and Zapier can do it for you. Perfect. That's a great overview. Mm. And you know, I always ask this question. If it's a new business or a new business owner is watching and is thinking about starting something new, is Zapier an appropriate tool? Or would you recommend setting it up a little bit later on in the game? Definitely later on. So the kind of thing you are thinking about when you're first setting up your business is ironing out all of the, the problems that you would have with a procedure. So you might have a procedure like accepting bills from your contractors and paying them, but until you've got that written up in a standard operating procedure that you can follow, um, automating that with something like Zapier might not be applicable. Mm. So it's great for when you're ready to start using uh, more automation in your business when you've already really ironed out the process and then you're ready to start leveraging that process because it's working and it's a good, good fit for your business. Mm. Mm. Awesome. So definitely you'd recommend Zapier for business owners who have already tested out their different best of breed 
or individual tools, and they're ready to get cracking and get those tools speaking to each other. That's right, yes. Mm. All right, awesome, great. It's, there's nothing wrong with doing things manually to start with. I always like to do things manually to begin with, doing it, and then you really get a feel for it then. Don't try to mm -hmm. automate something that you don't already, um, don't try to automate something that you haven't tried yet yourself doing manually. I have mm -hmm. a, I have a three-letter acronym that I use. Have I told you this one before? No, you haven't. I haven't, okay. So there's a three-letter acronym that I use called D-A-D, -D, and it stands mm -hmm. for dad. And it's because I'm a dad, and I want more time with my kids, so I think about this. So the first one is detonate. If the procedure that you're following in your business is not something you need to do anymore, don't do it. Stop doing it. Mm. If it's something you have to do but it's repetitive, then try to automate it. So that's the second one, A. And then the third one is if it's not automatable, write a standard oper standing operating procedure and delegate it. Mm. So you've got detonate. If you can't detonate it, if you can't get rid of it, it's something you need in your business, try to automate it. And then if you can't automate it, then delegate it. And then oh. you're going to have more time being a dad or oh, a mom, I love for that, that matter. But it works better with dad. It <laughs> doesn't really work for mom, but definitely works for dad. And I'm going to remember that. That's awesome. Yeah. I love so it. let's get started. Yeah, let's get started. I think a great place to begin, um, because keeping in mind, not everyone's going to be super tech savvy. What is the background on APIs? We yeah. always hear that acronym. It'd be good to hear it from you. And also how they work to make sure. Zapier function. So API, and it's, it's the API in the word Zapier. That's where they're getting their name from. Oh, not because of Zap. Oh. Yeah, Zaps and oh. API. Yeah, very clever, isn't uh. it? So an API is, is an application programming interface, three big words, that a company will produce so that other developers can, can make changes within their application. So generally, they create documentation that shows other developers how to code up ways to communicate within their web application. Mm. So it's usually very specific, the kinds of things you can do. For example, if you've got an, a, an accounting software, the API might allow you to create a new client. Mm. So there is, there is a specific recipe that you can follow to create a new, con to create a new client as a developer. So that's what an API um, does. And an API documentation is what you're going to need from your cloud-based service if you want to know how to connect with it like that. Mm. But what Zapier does, or what Zapier does, mm. I, I keep calling it Zapier because um, that's the way I speak English. But the way All Australians <laughs> speak really funny. So Sorry. the way that Zapier works is they've done all the back-end work for you. They've downloaded all that documentation that the various hundreds of services that they connect with um, supply. And then they've created a what you see is what you get interface for dragging and dropping the mm. various possibilities that those cloud-based applications have exposed for mm. you to use. Yep, that's a, a great overview. Mm. So it sounds like in the olden days, it used to be you'd have to be working with a developer, get that custom code, and link everything up manually. What Zapier does is just completely streamlines it and gives you a database of all of the potential options. It's right. It's, it's basically you're creating your own code just by dragging and dropping it all together in an mm. interface that anybody can use. Wow, awesome. Mm. Um, now, will people who are using Zapier, do they need to know anything about APIs or any of that technical stuff before they get started? No, it you don't. Not, not to get started. That's, you don't need to. Mm. Um, there's some things that Zapier won't do. And if, if you have a business with a very specific need and Zapier doesn't cover it, you can hire a developer to read the documentation of the service that you provide and create you a very specific um, solution. But what Zapier does cover these days with their great new features pretty much does, I'd say, more than 80% of what you'd need mm. with, with um, connecting with your cloud-based um, various softwares now. Mm. Awesome. And I know on Teach Me Tech, we only make recommendations that are going to work well with other tools. So definitely, they would be able to integrate with Zapier. So any of the shows that you're watching here will work. Mm -hmm. mm, beautiful. Um, look, we could go on forever about this, uh, but I wanted to touch on a few of the different ways that you can use Zapier in your business yes. and actually start streamlining things straight away. So it'd be awesome if you could share with us some basic examples so that we can kind of wrap our heads around how it works and then maybe work your way up to some more complicated yeah. examples. 
Sure. So let's yeah. think about which applications you might be using in your business. A lot of businesses these days use Google apps for business, mm -hmm. for their email and for Google Drive and for Google Docs and things like that. And you also might have an email marketing system to send autoresponders to your, to your prospects and clients, like MailChimp. So two examples, they're, they're two examples of cloud-based services. Another thing you might be using would be a form builder, like JotForm or Wufu. And you may have somebody submit a form where you want a folder created in Google Drive and... To continue enjoying this presentation, download Brin, the world's first business advisor in your pocket. To find out more, visit Brin.ai or search the App Store today.